James Neal Fox? Yeah? The guy who plays Lucifer on Lucifer on Forbidden Knowledge? Yeah, that's one of my videos. I'm you, man. Huh? I'm you. You're me. Yeah, I was you, but now I'm safe. Oh. I thought I knew everything just like you do. Uh, hey, I don't think I know everything. And I was smart mouth, the same as you. Well, I'm only that way when somebody's giving me a hard time or being seriously unreal with me, friend. Now, really, I... I was you. I used to beat my woman. I never hit a woman in my life. And I did jail time. I've never been in jail either. And I lost everything. My job, all my money, it was all over for me. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, but... I was you. You hear me? I was you and I had hit rock bottom. Listen, buddy, I... I had hit rock bottom and it was the best thing that ever happened to me. Uh-huh. It was the best thing that ever happened to me because I had nowhere to turn but Jesus. Well, I'm, uh... But first, I broke into my neighbor's house one night dead drunk and molested his dog in front of his kids. Listen. Then there was the time I made the nun strip at gunpoint. Uh, listen, man. I was you, James Neal Fox. I was out of control. But... I killed my boss with my bare hands. The law never caught up with me about that one because that wasn't the Lord's plan. Right. Do you know what I made those nuns do that time, do you? I don't want to hear about it. Don't you hang up on me, James Neal Fox. I gotta go. You may never have this opportunity again. Hey everybody, uh, the last skit, you know, like any skit I do, uh, reflects an exchange I had with an actual person on YouTube. It's an exaggeration, and of course it's fictional. But this happened on the Lucifer Forbidden Knowledge video, the, the comments page for that video, which, by the way, is has now exceeded 100,000 uh, views as of uh, Saturday, May 12th, 2012. So, yay for the Lucifer series. <laughs> I commemorate that Why, uh, with this little skit because just as that was, become, you know, reaching that threshold, you know, the first time any video of mine has gone that high, uh, it was, I was happened to be talking to this guy. So, I mean, he gets the, he gets the, the prize. <laughs> I wish it's just Cynthia. <laughs> Special. Uh, Evangelical Christian of the Year Award from the Lucifer series. <laughs> um, but, you know, I'm busy doing the Crowley thread, which is very involved. I don't know if there's ever been a vi video thread on YouTube or anywhere where I, a person goes into as much detail about the occult content and the numbers and the Hebrew approach to it and the Greek approach to it and then uh, Crowley's uh, flippy dippy mess with your head approach to it and what that's all about. So um, it's step by step, and you have to take take it in segments and not get too ahead of yourself, or it gets monomaniacal and weird. So in the meantime, just to keep my hand in it and to let you know I'm still here, I thought I'd talk a little about morality. Satanist William Draven has accused me of Abrahamic morality, meaning that I'm subscribing to the Ten Commandments, at least insofar as I raised my voice in a video about his glib, casual, chatty approach to Antiochus IV and his uh, atrocities, or rather, talking around his atrocities. <laughs> And, you know, some of you have seen those videos and some of you haven't. It's not necessary to have seen that video if you're just checking in on this. Okay, I'm just going to talk about what do I think is right and wrong. And I've talked about it a couple of times, you know, in videos. And Draven has certainly just passed it on by. And so let me talk about it in the context of Wicca and Crowley. And then you'll know and I'll know and I'll have something to refer to people because... Boy, you know, man, the whole world is obsessed with good and evil. It's just all, that's the whole story. Everyone wants to talk about that. 
They don't want to talk about higher consciousness or the fact that, you know, you become a better person as your nature changes just naturally. You don't have to have all those rules. But if you do want to talk about rules, then let's talk about the rules, okay? Because society has laws and ordinances and there's felonies and misdemeanors and ju courts of justice. And, well, what is it all about? Okay. So let's just talk about uh, the law, you know, the book of the law. Do as you will. Okay, that's a Wiccan maxim that comes from uh, Crowley's uh, Do What Thou Wilt. Uh, don't hurt anybody. Don't hurt anybody intentionally. Like I say, communicate with someone when you have inadvertently hurt them and work that out. And if you can't work it out, then respect one another's territory and leave each other alone. And if that person isn't respecting your territory, then, uh, then and only then, you assume a power ethic. Now, you want to call that Abrahamic morality. That, that's what Draven is waging against me. And let's keep in mind, he was upset about the tone I took. And when you're listening to somebody being confrontational with you, you don't always hear what they're saying. So I don't think he's misrepresenting me. I just think he's reacting. For each person, uh, you know, to elaborate on do as you will, for each person, uh, these include the right to live by one's own law, live in a way that one wills to do, work, play, and rest as one will, die when and how one will, which I think these days would embrace, a, you know, patient-assisted suicide, which I, I do, I am for. Uh, eat and drink is what one will. I think that these days would include legalizing drugs. I think drugs should be, you know, regulated. I do, for health reasons, okay, uh, for the good of the overall community. But I do think that they should be decriminalized. Live where one will, uh, move about the earth as one will, think, speak, write, draw, paint, carve, etch, mold, build, and dress as one will. Uh, Love when, where, and with whom one will. Certainly that includes sexual freedom on every level between consenting adults and in any arrangement they might come up with. And that, of course, includes gay and lesbians and treating them like people under the law. And kill those who would work these rights. <laughs> William Draven's lucky I didn't put a fatwa out for him to have him uh, killed. <laughs>
But as true will develops, you're going to feel compassion, you're going to feel moderation, you're going to feel affinity with others and with the environment and with nature. And at the end of the day, no, the uh, radical libertarian agenda that you might take Crowley for, uh, yes and no. All right. There are priorities. There's getting along. There's just the real practical everyday world. And there's also the inner world. And it's all about freedom. But it's a freedom of a most rarefied and profound and sublime level of freedom that Crowley himself never attained. Junkies don't know it. But he had his moments. He had his inspirations. And he had his channels. A lot of it is just his channel coming through. And, and then what that channel is about is for you to realize your own channel. Okay, so that keeps it honest and that keeps it real. I don't really feel that any of this is something that's even a little bit comprehensible to William Draven. The real question is, will, you know, Luciferian Satanism ever be the subject for an actual university discourse? And the answer is, of course, no, no way, okay? Uh, you know, Ford does uh, build on LaVey. He's an advance on LaVey, and I've given him credit for that. But what he's working with and building on never had firm enough foundations uh, to go anywhere in the first place. And while the right approach to Crowley and Spare will someday sneak on in through the back door of process philosophy and maybe by extension Luciferian Gnosis with it, uh, no way is uh, Ford's work going to come riding in piggyback on it.